thank you so much for joining us for today's uh, Women Entrepreneurship Weekly Founder Series. Uh, this series is designed to motivate and emerging entrepreneurs and support an inclusive entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, we do that by addressing the stereotypes of what an entrepreneur looks like, uh, engaging in a dialogue uh, about factors that impact women and other underrepresented entrepreneurs, and by creating a space with which we can listen and learn from each other. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Adriana Cantu. She is the CEO and founder of Revealix, uh, which is a startup company located in Austin that are innovating uh, a number of solutions to uh, prevent wounds in diabetic patients. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Your company has some amazing opportunities and abilities to be able to help people. Tell us a little bit about the company and about your journey in starting your company. Sure. Um, so my company is Revealix, and we're, we are focused on uh, bringing point of care solutions to uh, the medical environment and focused on giving clinicians and patients the tools to intercept complications in the diabetic limb. And my background is clinical, so uh, we'll kind of, I'm sure, get into that a little bit, but it's just my years of expertise as a wound care specialist, being a clinician, being an executive, um, being board certified as a wound care specialist, there's opportunities to take that body of knowledge and the pattern recognition that I have and now use you know, um, technology to enable that expertise to be put into a mobile device. So essentially creating a diabetic food egg expert that runs on your smartphone. And so that's, that's the idea behind um, Revealix is to make you know, uh, consistent, uh, repeatable uh, diabetic foot expertise available to the masses. And the goal is that every person with diabetes has the opportunity to avoid preventable wounds in amputation, something that is, is direly needed in the country. It certainly is, and we appreciate the, the work that you're doing um, to, to help patients and truly make an impact um, on them. Uh, I know your background, you come from a, a strong clinical background. Uh, did you always see yourself as an entrepreneur or was there a shift that you had to uh, make at some point, uh, uh, maybe to the dark side? <laughs> yeah, so uh, entrepreneur was not a word in probably the first half of my life. And, um, and uh, you know, so no, not at all. In fact, I think, you know, it's really an interesting uh, look back on my journey. I, I grew up in, in San Antonio, which is, you know, south of uh, where Texas State is. I grew up in San Antonio, uh, Hispanic yeah, family culture, very traditional. I think anybody from San Antonio understands you know, what my Christmases look like, you know, how many cousins I have. And it was, and it's wonderful. Um, you know, and I, I didn't, in my generation, I, I didn't have role models who were, um, you know, other than the, my mother's an educator, uh, you know, my, my father had a business, but it, it, the entrepreneurial uh, path wasn't really something I recognized. In fact, I wasn't sure what I wanted. I knew I loved science. I knew I loved, you know, psychology. So I pursued my undergraduate in biology I also knew I wasn't sure that I want to be a physician and I didn't want to be a nurse. So I knew all the things that, that kind of weren't, weren't the right fit. Um, eventually, uh, so I got my undergraduate in biology and uh, in that, yeah, it was at the University of Texas uh, in San Antonio. And when I did that, I got exposed to a, um, someone who came in and they were, they were a physical therapist. And I was like, well, that combines my loves of the engineering, you know, the biomechanics, psychology, everything. That's what I pursued, and I uh, got into Texas State's um, physical therapy program, and that to me uh, really unleashed where I am today. So I have to say that I don't, I know I wouldn't be a founder of a company um, that is able to do what we're doing without that foundation that came from my my uh, clinical training um, at Texas State. That's wonderful to hear, uh, yeah. and and really. Um, important for us to make sure that we are also uh, serving um, the community and the people yeah, who, who are our uh, students and, and joining us. Um, what are some of the uh, inspirations that you had along the way and, and how did you get into, you know, um, that first is the first company or, or that first dipping your toe into the entrepreneurial waters? 
Well, you know, um, so my initial uh, foray into the professional world is so, you know, left, left Texas State, licensed as a, as a uh, physical therapist, that my, even my clinical rotation was in wound care. So here I am in Austin and I worked at the um, trauma center for a number of years. And so that was fantastic. Uh, you would see the most complicated patients and have no time to do really amazing things. And we problem solved like crazy all day long. So it really took the, the, I was practicing at the edge of my license and it was thrilling. And so I loved that complexity. So this is, as I look back, I'm understanding well, how I got here. So I thrived on, you know, that environment, which was high pace. Um, you never could have a, a very easy decision, but you had to make them all along and everybody somehow made progress and had an impact. I left there, went to another role. I was an early member of the, the startup. And um, I say startup now because we didn't know that. I followed my friends into this company and uh, there we were, the early members in over 10 years. This is when I really started to understand what, how I was not just a clinician, but how I, uh, my mind thought, how I loved to solve problems and how I could see solutions and couldn't stop myself from making them happen. And so I, I was able to contribute um, a, a great, uh, you know, to the infrastructure of the company, build out the training, build out the operational infrastructure, and my role grew to become the vice president of clinical operations there. So 10 years later, you know, we had you know, over 200 clinical specialists throughout the country, wow. and over 100 million in revenue. And that unleashed the other side of me where I realized I can see you know, problems that need to be solved and start to put together um, the pieces to make uh, outcomes that were meaningful to organizations. Mm -hmm. um, and so, when I, when I left that role, it was to think of uh, the software side of drive, you know, building software to drive these repeatable processes. And all of that came from the years of experience and expertise that I had built in. So, you know, our minds are, are incredible and those patterns that are deep wired in that you know, um, you can now think about creating software to allow that to be replicated over and over again and drive those outcomes again through technology. So that that look back is only when I realized, oh my gosh, I'm sort of, I, I'm always trying to say, well, why can't they do it this way? Why have they thought of this? I feel like I've invented so many things uh, that never really happened, but they were all good ideas in my opinion. <laughs> That is definitely something at Texas State we, uh, you know, emphasize for our students is uh, developing that entrepreneurial mindset, because whether or not you are starting your own company at that moment, uh, you're using those skills, uh, which are complex problem solving skills, analytical skills, it is some Absolutely. of the communication and, and uh, team, you know, building skills that, that are really crucial. Uh, I know that you and Revelix have also participated in a number of accelerator programs like Techstars and our uh, partner, Div Inc. Can you yep. talk a little bit about some of those experiences and what you gained from them and what? Sure. Um, yeah, no, so one of the things you said was really a, um, just like to put a bright line around it, you know, becoming an entrepreneur um, and, and being able to do what we, one needs to do as a founder, you cannot do this alone. And so the, um, what you want to be really great at is all the things you listed, that that network and the ability to work well with others and kind of bring others into your idea when you don't have resources to compensate them. Um, so it really comes down to be, getting people to buy into your vision and understand and have that base of credibility that this is something that can be done. Uh, here's what I've assembled. This is what the opportunity is like. Here's the business you know, um, outlook. Here's the vision and here's the, the why it makes sense in the market today. So being able to sell that and recruit you know, people um, is how you start to make you know, many miles, uh, make the milestones uh, start to tick off. And being able to do that enough helps you get into programs like Debink, who are there to support underrepresented founders like me um, and help me kind of gain that third party validation that also shows that not only does Adriana have this idea, has she, does she have the credibility, has she you know, been able to show proof of concept, recruit some of the other people around her, but we think that this is the type of company that with just a little extra resources, we can help them get even further. 
And so being able to get, you know, um, pulled into those accelerated programs, programs has been immensely helpful because they gave me access to a broad network of um, partners that have each contributed um, valuable insight, mentoring, um, and introductions that are just the currency for a startup. Techstars was the same thing. Uh, the Techstars is one of, I think it's the top two um, accelerator in, in the country. And for Reveal It, being a healthcare company, they were, it was the United Healthcare's initial um, bet foray into, uh, the, into Accelerator. So they partnered with Techstars. So I and my team really had the opportunity to be immersed uh, and embedded into the United Healthcare ecosystem. Wow. to solve really hard parts of our uh, business model, which have to be, you know, on the, on the larger enterprise side. So these are things that you just, you know, you can't do it alone. So you have to be able to really, you know, set your path and, and hope that you can get into programs like these. And they still are a valuable network and they've been championing, you know, our success along the way.